What's up everybody? My name is Dean Chessman and in this short tutorial I'm going to show you how I make this uh, warping effect using a slope and a displaced top. All right, for this effect um, we're going to start out with uh, making some text that we can we can warp around. So I'm going to go ahead and add a text top and in my font I'm going to pick something um, a little nicer. Let's do this 10 condensed here um, and let's put in there for the text I'm going to say warp and let's make the size of our top here 1280 by 720 and I'm going to use all the space I can here fill it up um, and then I'm going to sort of tile it out I'm going to use a transform to do that and inside my transform I'm going to go to my tile tab and say I'm going to extend by repeating and that way when I scale it down I get this repeating grid of text and I'm also going to rotate just to give it some interest um, I'm also going to put it over a background by adding the alpha to my background color and clicking this comp over background color okay so that's interesting enough uh, I'm going to add this to a displace now and actually, just in case I want to add something else in here before this, I'm going to add it null. All right, so I've got my displace. Now, how am I going to displace this? So um, like, like we talked about, this is going to be a slope displacement. So let's first add what's, what I'm going to sample the slope from. So I'm going to use a ramp and going to also make this 1280 by 720 and make my ramp circular. Um, and I'm going to have my ramp go up to white. So I'm going to click a middle spot up, move that up to white and click the out spot down to black. And let's see, I'm going to put that into a null and <clears throat> let's take that into a slope now. Okay. So the way slope works, um, I think I've talked about this in other tutorials, but you have to imagine that what, what this is going to do is take um, each pixel value from the input and as if you were looking down upon this like it was a mountain and the white is the tip of the mountain and the black is the very bottom it'll give you the values in the vertical and horizontal positions of which way like if you were to put a ball on that pixel which way would that ball roll and uh, to visualize this slope better I'm going to hit A and then N to show the normalized values of what I'm seeing so this right now, um, I've got my slope set to put my vertical luminance in the blue. I'm going to change the that to actually be in the green, vertical luminance in the green. And because I don't need this alpha or this blue blue value, I'm going to change the pixel format to 32-bit RG. Okay. So and you'll notice too, we're getting these artifacts in here, and the reason we're getting that is because our pixel values. Um, for my ramp are only 8 bits. So I'm going to up that as well. And I only need it to be black and white. So I'm going to 32 bit mono. So if I change 32 bit mono, you'll see now it's nice and smoothed out. Okay, so I've got my slope. Uh, and then if I bring that into my displace, see it's all messed up. But that's because in my displacement, I need to change my vertical source to be green. And then also, um, I'm going to go back in my slope here, and instead of having my midpoint be, be 0.5, since I'm using 32-bit, I'm using negative numbers as well. So I'm going to utilize that and put my zero point at zero for both my slope and for my, my displace. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now inside my slope, I can go in here and adjust the strength as well. So we'll see my warp amount will change based on this. Okay. and. You'll notice too here, we're not getting, it's not that interesting yet. And part of that reason is also because our slope right now is just linear. So we're just going essentially in a straight, our mountain, our mountain side is essentially straight up. But if we want to make that more curved and more interesting, I can say uh, ease in, ease out. And so, okay, we're getting something. Um, if I pump this up really high, you can see we're getting that warp effect. Now, um, there's no reason why this can't be uh, moving, so I'm going to go ahead and and add some animation to that. So in my phase of my ramp, I'm going to say abs time dot seconds over. Let's make it fairly quick. Let's say over eight. Okay, so now I'm getting my ramp is animating 
Uh, let's see, what else could we do to this? Maybe instead, um, let's take this out to a null and, and add a view here. So, so we're kind of always seeing what we're doing as we're moving around and making changes. All right, so instead of um, the circular, let's look at what it's gonna be like if we did maybe a, a vertical or and maybe even, what if I take this, what, well, what if I do the similar thing and transform this to make it angled? So if I say transform, I'm gonna tile repeat and then uh, give it a little bit of an angle. So my warp is kind of going against the direction of my text. Okay, that's interesting. Um, one thing you might also do, let's see, um, let's go back to linear. And then instead of, um, instead of doing that kind of in and out, um, so ease in and out, we'll do linear on our, on our ramp, but then after our slope, what if we blurred it to make it that transition a little more interesting? Um, okay, let's, let's, uh, Maybe you can pull our period down so it repeats a couple times. So let's do 0.25, so it's four times. All right. Um, now let's see. We can play with our strength some more. Great. Okay. What if uh, instead of a ramp, we could also do something like use a noise as an input? So if I bring in a noise top, uh, I'm going to go to the common page and make it 1280 by 720 and change my pixel format to 32-bit mono. And then let's play here with the look of this. So um, let's bring our harmonics down, pull our period up, maybe even to like a three or four or something like that. Um, and then let's animate it. So let's make it a simplex 4D and then put in our translate 4D as apps time dot seconds. And then we can tweak this, this scale amount to slow it down or speed it up. Let's bring that into our slope. Okay. Um, anytime I change this input, I'm, you know, likely to want to change a bit of what the slope strength will be. Um, so that's fun. Uh, what else could we do? So maybe instead of a input with text, what if we brought in, brought in a video? So if I bring in. A video here and instead of my text I drag that into the null then I start getting cool warp effects happening um, let's see let's let's bring our our period back down a bit more so we get some more change. okay this is another another point so you'll see I'm, I'm getting some sort of uh, stretching or you know streaking happening in the displace, you can say how you want to extend the displacement when it pulls in from the outside. So maybe you would want to go to zero, so it'll just bring in black. So it looks like you have sort of an edge of what's happening getting pulled in. Or you can say repeat, and that'll bring in from whatever the, you know, it, from the, if you pull up from the bottom, it'll bring in what's at the top. Uh, for this one, it's probably more likely it's going to look better with a mirror. So I, it just mirrors out the pixels uh, that it's pulling in, so you, you don't really notice that quite as much happening. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to leave this one pretty quick. Uh, just kind of a cool, simple effect that you can do with really anything is uh, just bringing in a black and white image into your slope and then using your slope to then displace an image. Hope this helps you guys out and uh, hope you make something cool out of it. And I'll see you in the next one.